Hello YouTube, in today's video we are diving deep into my 6 month long term review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max in blue titanium color. I have divided the video into chapters for easy navigation and at the end I will help you decide if it is worth the upgrade. So before we jump in, if you are new to the channel please do consider subscribing for more videos like this. Alright back to the video review. First up, design and durability. Titanium, so strong, so light, so pro. That's the tagline for the iPhone 15 Pro series. First, let's talk about the light part. The 15 Pro Max, which weighs in around 221 grams, that's lighter by around 20 grams when compared to last year's 14 Pro Max, which weighed in around 240 grams. You might think it's a small difference but I can feel it right on my hand and especially if you are someone who is using the regular pro sized iPhones and always wanted to upgrade to the larger Pro Max but felt let down by its weight or the size well this year could be the reason for your upgrade. Not just that even the overall dimensions have reduced to almost by a millimeter in all the directions. So still maintaining the same screen size so the bezels have reduced considerably that you almost get 90% screen to body ratio and Apple brought back the rounded edges reminiscent of the iPhone 10, making it incredibly comfortable to hold and it's a nice blend of nostalgia and the modern squared of design. However, if you are getting the blue titanium or the black one. I have noticed some minor chips on the top left corner as you can notice here and also around the camera rings which it doesn't affect the functionality or something like that but if you are getting the natural titanium or the white one the options so it's less prone to showing off this all these uh, smudges and also uh, you know if you are going for uh, lighter colors it's less visible and the uh, scratches everything is it is less visible and also as you can notice on my screen there are some micro scratches as compared to the 13 pro which i had it was flawless okay that's fine so if you are using a screen protector you won't be getting this but overall it's really good coming to the durability part as you might have seen the video from Jerry Rick Everything where the 15 Pro Max glass back snaps into you know it shatters. So when it is bent. Well the reason is now Apple is using a separate back glass panel which can be replaced for around 150 US dollars or like 15,000 rupees. But that's not just the reason. It takes a lot of effort to crack the glass with your hand or even if you are accidentally placed it in your back pocket and if you sat on it. So the odds of cracking are pretty less and still if you are not satisfied you can just put on a case something like this and at least that would avoid the chipping issues that I have with the darker models. The next issue I am going to talk about is overheating. Initially, I did experience some overheating issues, especially when I used the phone continuously for some time and then I put to charge, especially if I am using like Instagram or Snapchat or some demanding applications. But thankfully, with the recent software updates, right now I am on 17.4, it seemed to be completely addressed and I am no longer facing the overheating issues. So it does tend to get a little bit warmer especially when I use the phone outside you know in hot sunlight during this summer times or like if I charge it in the wireless charger of my car so you know like not just the 15 pro uh, it's like whatever phone you have like if you're using it in a uh, hot summer and like if you're charging in your car wireless charger it will definitely get hotter or Another instance that I've seen is when I shoot 4K videos for longer duration or like if I play some demanding games then it gets uh, warm to touch but not it doesn't get anything like alarming or overheating issues. So if you are planning on upgrading to the 15 Pro series this issue shouldn't stop you from 
upgrading or like worrying about this issue and coming to the battery life and health since i bought this phone in november 2023 this has been my primary device and presently i am at 99% battery health with 126 cycles recently i came across this you know like according to apple the iphone 15 series has improved battery chemistry retaining 80% of its original battery capacity even after 1000 cycles compared to the 500 cycles from the previous generation so this is a wonderful thing especially for ones who would retain their phones for like say 3 or 5 years so to give you a context the iphone 13 pro which i had been using for 2 years is now at 87% so if you are someone coming from the 13 pro max especially they had a really stellar battery life but there is one catch it was good when the ios version of that time the 15 ios 15 16 wasn't uh, so much like battery intensive as of today so today if you compare it to the iphone 15 pro max on ios 17 the newer phone certainly has its advantage but if you are someone coming from the 14 pro max then that had the worst battery degradation in the entire lineup so my friend who had it for a year now and his phone is down to 86 percentage in a year compared to my 13 pros 87 percentage in two years so in that regard the 15 pro max would be a good upgrade so more on this at the end of this video Next let's talk about the overall experience starting with the screen it's just awesome so 120 hertz pro motion display which is one of the two reasons why i get the pro iphone every year we are looking at a super bright 1000 nits display for everyday use and it goes up to crazy 2000 nits under direct sunlight well now there are phones which can go up to 2600 nits but this is bright enough and the content is crisp and vibrant no matter the viewing conditions and overall experience has been great as i upgraded from the 13 pro to the 15 pro max the first thing i noticed is the larger display coupled with the thinner bezels and the brighter display in addition to the dynamic island it makes a complete experience for me and that's the reason why i don't upgrade each year an alternate year upgrade feels more substantial and if you are someone who is coming from the 12 pro then the 120 hertz would make you feel a butter smooth experience so that's when you first use this pro motion display so something with a pro motion display if you use it and then when you try to go back to your previous phone and then try to use that so that's when you notice the difference it feels jittery and that's how you get to know the pro motion display and once you if you are used to the pro motion display there is no going back now let's talk about the cameras which are everyone's favorite the iphone 15 pro max continues the apple's camera magic especially for everyday usage even mkbhd awarded the 15 pro as the best camera phone in 2023 well there are smartphones that can capture better photos than iphone especially with the zoom camera and some other features but iphone is still the best video capture camera period and coming to the still capture mainly the consistency of the cameras you get what you see the true to life colors and the shutter speed and what you see in the viewfinder you are getting the same image so that only an iphone can deliver and with the newer video uh, capabilities such as recording in prores log and storing everything directly to an external ssd it makes it a real pro device so coming to the changes that you would notice instantly so first thing is hdr5 technology which brings in more detail and dynamic range so the sky or the cloud it doesn't appear blown out 
and second is the new 5x optical zoom lens which can digitally zoom up to 25 times which is good especially when you want to snap uh, in some concert or the upcoming IPL cricket match but the main reason why I allow this 5x tetraprism lens is for the portrait shot so sure you need to move a little further back from the subject when compared to the previous 3x telephoto lens but the natural background separation that you achieve out of this very 5x tetraprism lens is similar to what you get with the dedicated DSLR camera and I'm not kidding so see these photos for yourself and it's really worth it plus the default 24 megapixel mode delivers incredible sharpness than what we got before so this only works during the normal lighting conditions and during those low light situations the night mode is simply unbeatable mainly as you see the image how it looks before the photo is taken and you are not getting some a complete blank screen and then the processed photo that you get with the S24 Ultra so everything is more streamlined here and so uh, overall great camera package especially if you are coming from something say like the 12 Pro uh, as the mainly as you can see the light glare issue has been reduced considerably with this iteration finally the switch to USB type C well for regular consumers it won't matter much but for someone like us it's a huge change similar to the transition from the 30 pin connector of the iPhone 4s to the lightning port of the iPhone 5 which was a smaller and more convenient port so thanks to EU for pushing this change but I still believe a government shouldn't dictate what a tech company should do now I can carry just one cable to charge my MacBook, iPad, AirPods Pro 2 and Apple Watch with Type-C and now even the iPhone 2 so I no longer need a lightning cable. The main advantage that I see with the USB Type-C on Pro models it's finally supporting USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds so it can transfer up to 10 gigabit per second so for that you need a separate cable obviously so the one in box it doesn't work so that's how it's in the android side as well when you compare it to the previous theoretical max speed of usb 2 which was pretty low at 480 megabit per second and another advantage of type c is you can use it as a display port so you can connect the iPhone to monitor or even TVs with the help of right adapters and dongles or if it has a type C port it's directly can connect your phone and it's lag free and you can use it for gaming or you can use it to share photos and videos with your family. One more thing you can finally do reverse charge other device. I mean not the wireless one but through the USB type C cable you can charge your airpods or apple watch or even another phone and that is up to 4.5 watts through this versatile USB type C port but sadly there is one downside there is still no increase in the charging speeds maybe with the 16 pro that is rumored to get a 45 watt charging there so let's see the next change is action button so this feature of the 15 pro series is the one which i am not using the fullest i had neither used the ring silent switch button too as i keep my phone always in silent so initially i had mapped it to the camera but my muscle memory it picks up from the lock screen itself so then i used some siri shortcuts to map it to uh, something like a mini control center which works fine but i again hardly use it so if you have some cool useful ways to make use of the action button do let me know in the comment section below then finally coming to the speaker and microphone quality they are really good so have a listen to the speaker quality and with the pro max models it's really good and it's loud so the stereo suppression is also really good so have a listen to the sample music
and coming to the mics so they are also crystal clear so always the other side person can hear me properly and i didn't get any issues with the reception and adding to the fact the new qualcomm x70 modem the 5g connectivity has been really good even in some crowded places where i noticed i get better reception than my previous iphone 13 pro and the internet speeds has been really good both on cellular and also on wi-fi and now we have wi-fi 6e so if you have a compatible 6e router so you can enjoy the uncluttered 6 gigahertz band and in terms of gps i don't see much difference but the addition of navic by isro so which works better with the range accuracy especially if you're in india so finally should you get the iphone 15 pro max is it worth buying well let's consider this it's already been six months and the next six months the 16 pro max would be out according to recent rumors the design of pro and pro max models would stay the same but the sizes would increase from 6.1 to 6.3 for the pro model and 6.7 to 6.9 inches for the pro max model respectively and to go with it even the battery size gets bumped to 4676 mAh and additionally they'll be adding a 48 megapixel telephoto camera and a capture button which are expected uh, I mean like possibly to push the spatial video recording to 4k which is now 1080p on the 15 pro max so if you're planning on getting a vision pro then it would be your obvious choice so one thing if you are using something like iphone 13 pro max and above then i would say hold on for now and go to the 16 pro max well another reason to wait is apple's recent push towards the generative ai so ai is the new market trend and apple hasn't entered this space yet but the upcoming wwdc in june so that could be a good indicator of what AI features will come baked in the iOS 18. While these features are expected to work on older devices eventually, especially the cloud processed one, Apple might restrict certain features to the newer chips. So even though all the iOS 17 devices can run iOS 18, Apple's software locking technique could limit the newer AI features especially those performed on device to the newer A18 Pro chip that you would find in the next generation 16 Pro and Pro Max. So these are the two main reasons why you would want to hold off on getting the 15 Pro Max now. Now the next thing, who should get the iPhone 15 Pro Max now? Always remember one thing, the next one would be better than the previous one so there is no choice so should you go for the 15 pro max if you are using iphone 12 pro max or older your battery might be weak now and the camera performance would not be comparable to the latest smartphones in the market or say for example if you want to try a bigger pro max size model and if you're coming from the even say the 13 pro or even the 14 pro the extra screen size and battery life without sacrificing much on the portability so thanks to the lighter titanium build and slightly rounded corners the 15 pro max is a great option the major upgrades here are the usb type c port the 5x telephoto lens and these things like say for example you are coming from a 13 pro the transition from a fixed notch to a dynamic island is a breath of fresh air so which category do you fall into choose wisely based on your specific needs that's all i had in this video thank you for joining me on this six month journey with the iphone 15 pro max let me know in comments below if you have any further questions and don't forget to like and subscribe for more real life tech reviews like this. Thank you for watching and as always stay safe and peace.